negotiations uh, in Antalya, uh, Turkey, and the different issues uh, for India. Uh, that this uh, and then this issue of climate change was at the center stage of our discussions as well. Uh, I have argued that uh, uh, here we have to apply at least to some degree the Bulletin Bay principle uh, uh, because uh, and, and uh, 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 there is a counter argument sometimes gets made actually uh, in, uh, by, by many commentators principally from the developed countries but also sometimes other parts of the world that you know, India ought to be much more aggressive in its approach uh, to dealing with climate change because it is the most vulnerable to uh, the, the vagaries of climate change. Uh, I think that sort of argument really turns the turns the political principle on its head and, and, and uh, perhaps, uh, if I may put it more graphically, uh, it, it turns it into the victim pay principle. Uh, that is really not, not how either the OECD and the European Union uh, apply uh, the principle uh, in, in, in their own territories, actually, OECD and the European Union both accept the political pay principle. Uh, so, so I think, you know, on that ground, certainly, uh, that India's uh, index actually given seen in the context of uh, what uh, and what space it occupies in the world uh, in the existing stock of carbon uh, is, is anything uh, uh, is, is an ambitious position. Uh, India today occupies only three percent of the carbon space. Uh, compared with about two thirds of it being occupied by the developed countries, such like China. Also, in flow terms, if you look at the current levels of emissions uh, annually, uh, uh, two thirds of them are pretty much coming from the developed countries, such like China. Uh, India is only about uh, between five and six percent. Uh, so, seen in that context, uh, the, the commitment by India to cut its uh, per capita per uh, unit of GDP uh, uh, carbon emissions. 